I'm delighted to introduce our next speaker for East Asia, Jaya Prakash Sarasat Gopal, sorry if I said that wrong, who's showing showcasing Singapore. He's been teaching young learners aged 7 to 17 since 2007 at public schools, private language institutions, enrichment centres, and at the British Council, preparing them for national examinations, including the GCE O and A levels in Singapore. He also holds the Cambridge CELTA and the Young Learners Extension. Take it away, Jaya Prakash. Okay, thank you, David. Hello, everyone from uh, Singapore, and um, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Uh, I'm Jay, and I'm going to talk to you about um, eng engaging texts um, and using a visual storyboard approach with upper secondary learners. Um, like David said, I have been working with young learners in Singapore since 2007 and I largely work with them uh, to prepare them for the national exams, uh, like the O-levels and the A-levels. Um, and uh, oftentimes what the students find challenging is to engage with the narrative texts. Now, just before I start, i um, just going to give you a little audience engagement. Um, what you have to do is I'm going to show you uh, four pictures. In the chat window, help me type words, expressions, phrases that comes to mind. If you're ready, um, your 30 seconds is now. Does it? Yep. Hot oh, stuffy exhausting, yeah? Hard work. Peaceful, scary, challenging. Dangerous, vast. Mm -hmm. Ecosystem, wilderness, sweat and danger okay oh yay hope <laughs> it's a real challenge okay i'm gonna move on um this is the flow of my presentation keep typing in the window while i uh, let you know what's the flow of my presentation what i'm going to talk about is uh the challenge that singaporean students face in the exam context or in a classroom in general uh, after which I'll talk about the solution that I have tried in the classroom as, f as well as show you the effect and the outcome of um, what I've done with the storyboard and how it actually is useful for the students. Uh, the first bit is the challenge. Now, um, a lot of Singaporean students, they tend to be fluent in English. Uh, they, they struggle with accuracy at times. Um, they also come from a mixed variety of English as a first language and or English as a second language or English as a foreign language uh, backgrounds. Now what happens with this is that you often tend to get classrooms that are mixed ability and students who are at different levels and stages uh, in the level of English. Now the common problem with uh, students here is that they often find narrative texts difficult to engage because they think that it is something that they've never seen before and that it is something that they cannot handle uh, when they sit for the exams. No. One of the reasons why they, they get really jittery about narrative text is because of the high emphasis on national exams um, at schools here as well as in the classroom setting it's often a test versus teach approach where students are supposed to have understood the passage uh, in order to answer the questions that follow. Uh, and students struggle with the English that's used in narrative text because the text can be taken from around the world. And uh, most students are familiar with the colloquial variety of the English language. And like I said, they are mixed ability. So they come from a range of places, uh, including South Asia, Singapore, Southeast Asia, North Asia, and Northeast Asia. Hey, 
Now, what I found useful in a classroom is to actually get the students to engage with the text prior to reading the text. Now, the technique is not something that people are unfamiliar with, and therefore it becomes a lot more practical to use in the classroom. Um, they predict the language and the sequence using a storyboard, and I will show you how it actually helps them or show the outcome of how what I've done in the classroom. Now, visual storyboards are a wonderful approach to what I call front-loading. Uh, in a reading task, the three stages, as we know, the pre-task, the task, and the post-task. Um, I recommend doing a lot of pre-task activities to engage the students because what it helps them with is the use of the language as well as the emotions and familiarize them with the setting and the background that is often overlooked. But I believe that that is pretty much uh, the biggest problem in general because uh, they are very unfamiliar with a lot of settings that you might not be aware of living in a city state and uh, living in a city and just um, finding something new as a background unfamiliar and not understandable. Okay. Uh, like I said, uh, the visual storyboard, it helps students predict the language, sequence the events, and understand and appreciate the content before they even engage with the text. Um, like we saw earlier with these pictures, uh, you gave me words like hope, scary, a real challenge, danger, peaceful, uh, uh, as well as dangerous with the snake, vastness. Okay. Now these were some of the student responses when I did this stage in the pre-reading task. They came up with a snake slithering, poisonous snakes. Locate my accommodation. Um, the shepherd was unsuccessful. Was able to shoot the snake. Uh, delirium was setting in. Uh, seemed impossible to spot the shepherd and the sheep. Um, the green robe. I found this really interesting because they were making a reference to the snake as a green robe. So it goes to show that the language is within them. They have the awareness of the language. Um, and also over here, uh, expenses of uh, the Gobi Desert. Uh, the desert was vast and was empty. Man, horizon, sun shining brightly, and desert. Okay. It's time for audience engagement again. Now this is uh, fastest fingers first. This is your task. In the next 60 seconds, in the chat window, tell a story no more than five sentences using all four pictures. Your time starts now. This flock, but a snake came up. Mm -hmm. He was in the desert by himself and was scared. He, a shepherd herded the sheep and he walked into the desert. The snake appeared and he suddenly ran away. <laughs> That's great. I uh, hope the valley came and helped him. Snake. Yep. I'm give, gonna give you a couple of more seconds. Okay, um, what, is, what I'm going to show you is that while students find narrative texts um, 
challenging because they often think that, oh, one, we don't have the language. Two, well, thank you, David. That's a really nice story over there. Uh, one, they don't have the language. Two, they are very unfamiliar with the situation and the background. And um, they often find it difficult to understand the figurative language that goes on in a narrative text because oftentimes uh, the most common situation is that they are thrown the text and they are told, oh yes, this is the text, answer the questions. Now, um, the skill that they need to uh, ace in this kind of situation is to get them to be aware that they might be living in a Singapore context where it's pretty much a city-state, but that they are also able to make a lot of connections based on what they've read before, as well as um, what they have heard from their friends. Now, uh, this is a storyboard. It's very simple. Um, it's very practical. You do, it doesn't take a lot of time. Now, how I have divided up the storyboard is to get them to use the upper part of it to have their images. And then these boxes over here, uh, I think this, the teacher can then use these boxes uh, based on what their class requires for the language output. Because uh, in this experiment, my input was very minimal because I wanted the students to understand that they have it in them uh, to know and understand the content and the language of the text. So the effect is what is interesting. Uh, one is student generated student-generated content and language, uh, it immediately builds confidence. It, it makes them realize that, oh, they can start making connections based on these four pictures to other areas that they are aware of. So, ready to see student responses. Now, the summary of the story is that the guy is wandering around the desert. Some of them are hungry and exhausted. Uh, they find a snake. They kill it, eat it. And the sheep indicates that they have reached civilization. Okay. Now, this is interesting. Um, I tried this task with a group of students that are of a very mixed ability. And they were done over two classes. Uh, one of them needed a lot of language help. Uh, the other class uh, had a higher level of the language. But in both cases, what we can see is that they do come up with, one, the sequencing, um, what they think the flow of the story is. And two, you can see that they do come up with words like palpitating, uh, blazing, frantic, and nervous. Um, and in this slide over here, okay, so you have exhausted, hungry, thirsty, um, they were in pain, it was scorching, it's that, uh, they were determined uh, and forceful. Again, this storyboard was interesting because uh, they guessed the story uh, as it appears in the text. They're hungry, they find a snake, uh, they had the snake for lunch in order to move on with their task of getting out of the desert. Now, this one is uh, something I wanted to highlight. Um, it's vast, empty, dry, and hot, all well and good. What it also highlighted was that the students made a guess. Why did this guy or group of people end up in the desert? So their guess was um, they were probably imprisoned and that they needed an escape. So they escaped from prison, but the only way to go where no one will find them was the desert. Now, I found this really interesting because the text was based on a true story about uh, political prisoners who escaped prison and ends up in the desert and make their way across the Gobi Desert and find redemption in the Himalayas. So that the students actually made this connection for me was uh, very telling that a lot of the Singaporean students actually have content knowledge in them. Uh, the task or the challenge for the student is, or the teacher is, how are we going to bring this out of the student? Um, I will show you more of the examples that the students came up with um, here. 
um, arms akimbo. He was arid, exhausted. He harnesses the power of the Black Panther and wrestles the snake. Um, very typical teenage responses, but it also goes to show that they were having fun with the storyboard as they were coming up with it. Um, I'm going to just keep sliding the win. Okay. Um, this one deserves special mention because even though they were stick figures, um, they got the story pat down and what was interesting was that they, they even made it a, a metaphor. They said that the, the snake represents the obstacles in life and if you do not um, uh, conquer that obstacle, you can't move towards your destination. And I felt that that was a really interesting uh, inference that they actually made uh, from a very simple narrative. I'm going to keep rolling the images. Now, this girl, she was really interesting. Uh, they worked in pairs. Uh, they were students who were Singaporean students when they had um, special education needs and also uh, one of them was from uh, China and had very low level of the language but it also goes to show how uh, the two of them worked together thought about the situation uh, and put down the emotions that they felt uh, as well as the kind of uh, words that they thought they could see in the passage um, it was a very easy task uh, to set up, but yet you could also differentiate it to help the, the students who needed more scaffolding uh, with the task. And uh, this was something that made me feel really uh, proud of the students because uh, these two students often felt that they were really challenged or it was very challenging whenever they saw a slab of text and that it was going to be impossible for them to answer questions. Um, but it gave them a lot of confidence which they went on to actually use to answer the questions that followed. Um, okay. Which brings me to this part. Now this is the text that we are seeing. It was taken from uh, Educational Publishing House with uh, acknowledgement to the Singapore Examination Boards and the Cambridge uh, UCLES. Uh, this is the text that they dealt with. Uh, they got this text after they had done the storyboarding so that one, they can they can check that they got the sequencing right and that uh, they were able to identify language that's similar to what's been used in the text as well as uh, they were asked to present their storyboards and then they were asked to compare the text which was put up on the uh, interactive whiteboard and they were to grade each other as to how uh, whose story came the closest to what was uh, in the text that was given to them after all the pre-task activity. Now what it helped me do was to then minimize a lot of teacher input. Uh, the activity became very student-led and uh, they got, they grew more confident from the time they started to the end of the storyboard. Uh, it also gave them the opportunity to then give presentation. They thought it was kind of cool that they got all the words and the language uh, pretty similar to what was seen in a text. Now, this text that I've given them is actually a text from the O-level exams itself. Uh, from the year 2005 and they were really surprised that oh my god um, uh, how did we manage to actually uh, figure out what was going on in this text and um, how did we come up with the language um, which emphasizes my point that when we trust the students and know that that background knowledge is in them what we need to help them do is to make that connection with the background knowledge uh, the language and the emotions that come with them before they engage the text because one, uh, the confidence level just zooms up there. 
Uh, two, it makes them very autonomous in their learning. And three, it makes them really independent after, after the classroom activity outside of the classroom. You can walk away confident going, your students will have the skills to engage the text. So for example here, uh, I did not give them any help with vocabulary, but they somehow managed to guess based on the activity that these were the meanings of words uh, delineated, capitulated, repudiated uh, voraciously. Uh, these words are high vocabulary for the level that I'm looking at, which was secondary three, which are uh, 14, 15 year olds. And they did manage to guess these words, which helped them actually further build confidence and realize that they can engage with the narrative text based on the storyboarding technique. Which then leads me to my summary. Um, one of the challenges that students face is that they often go, oh my god, all these words, I actually don't understand them. I can't even identify the narrative text uh, story flow in it. But front-loading it and getting the students to trust themselves and scaffolding it in a storyboard allows them to engage with their prior knowledge, their emotions, their feelings, as well as uh, look into the language that comes from within so that the effect is that, one, if student-generated content and language, uh, they become confident over time engaging texts, knowing that they have it in them. And two, it also helps them make uh, further connections from just the text and uh, bring it further and share it with the classroom. Um, yes, so that's what I had wanted to share. Uh, that's what I have shared so far. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, now, for further reading, um, I, I looked at uh, effective practices for developing reading comprehension, as well uh, as the teacher's toolkit, ways classroom achievements with strategies, as well as um, the four resources model. Um, and there's a lot of trial and error going on in the classroom. And what I would like to say is thank you very much for listening to me. Um, I hope you found that useful. And um, a lot of Thanks to David uh, Sinem and um, Leah, one of my managers, who um, recommended me for this. Uh, now I'll say, uh, would you have any questions talk, yeah. that you'd like yes, me to take? Yes, we are open for questions. Now we have, we have about six minutes of this time slot left, so please put your questions into the chat box, and Jay will be happy to respond to them. Thank you, David. Um, thank you, Leah. Thank you, Marielle. Thank you, M. Uh, thank you, Virginia. Yes, um, like Virginia said, I find it really empowering for the students. How much of the lesson do you spend doing a pre-task? Um, yes, I'll say about 40%. So if I take a one-hour lesson, uh, I usually uh, do pre-task activity, front-load them, uh, for about the first 20 minutes. Maximum, it should take 25 minutes. Um, so in a one hour lesson, what I do with engaging, if I'm doing a reading task, I often front load it with about 20 to 25 minutes of pre-task activities. Um, the task becomes really easy, so they get over it really quickly, and uh, it becomes very student-led, and then they move on to the post-task, which you still have about another 20 minutes to cover. Oh, uh, how many lessons does this take? This was one single lesson. This was a one hour, 15 minute lesson. Uh, so the pre-task activity was the story brought front loading, where I gave them the pictures, I gave them some, uh, uh, I got on their feedback, then they gave them the storyboard, they presented the storyboard, and then they engaged the text, they did the comprehension task, which was after that, which is about uh, an activity that's about 
seven or eight questions uh, in an exam format. And uh, the whole lesson then ended with them sharing their idea of how they felt or they would have felt um, if they would have been stuck in a desert. Uh, so all of that took me about one hour, 15 minutes. Uh, the students, the students initially, did they like the pre-task? Initially, uh, they thought, okay, great, like you're asking us to draw, like on a reading lesson. Uh, I, I, and I had to keep it really realistic because of the time limits. I said, you can even draw stick figures, like you can even just draw lines because uh, even that abstract concept will probably bring some language out of you. Uh, they ran with it. Uh, initially, they were kind of quiet, but towards the end or towards the halfway mark, when they realized that they were getting somewhere, uh, they were just on it. I couldn't actually, I actually had to kind of put a stop to the activity because they felt it was, um, that they had to finish the storyboard. But my point was, no, I needed to show you that you had the story within you and it was not necessary to finish it because then you can sequence uh, the frames as a whole class as well because uh, people or the other students would have come up with the other part of the story. Um, do you find that your learners are willing to do this type of front loading on their own? Um, that's an interesting question. I have yet to go back to the classroom uh, to ask them about front loading techniques that they've tried on their own. Um, what has helped me with the O level students is that they kind of break it down into simple questions like um, who are they, where they are, and what do we feel before they actually engage with the text. So they might not even um, have the time to draw it, but they have actually narrowed everything down to three questions. Um, for students who find text very uh, challenging to comprehend, what they've started to do is by the margin in the side, they kind of draw out what they think they're reading. So that has helped them uh, with the tasks or the comprehension reading task, uh, especially under timed condition. Okay. Um, what did you choose to do as a follow-up? Oh, okay. I usually follow this up with uh, a speaking task. Uh, I make it usually a, I usually make it a presentation. So what they had to do was to present the story, and if they haven't finished it, where do you think the story is going to end up? Uh, so speaking activities like presentation. Uh, as well as uh, make it a different ending, as well as if uh, write a letter, write a letter to your friend that you've read this text and how you think it's going to end uh, so that you vary the language input or output from the students. WH question, yeah. Yeah, I agree. The WH questions uh, definitely help them with it. But I think what uh, the storyboarding helps them to see is where and how the WH questions actually uh, come in as they engage with the text. Thank you. Any more questions? <laughs> Thank you, Sinem. So thank you very much, Jay, for that. that presentation. Thank Lots you. I can see in the chat. Lots of, yeah. Thank you. Look, I can see in the chat lots of people thank you, talking David. about uh, thank you, David, too. taking yeah. some of these ideas and adapting them for their own classrooms, which is great. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> so uh, we... thank you very much for this opportunity, well, thank you David. Very much for